So let us talk about the design story. What actually happens during the process of designing a building and how we integrate Omniverse into that. And we will show you how you can work the way you want to work in the tools that you love working with and are accustomed to working with and with the people that you need to make this successful. Let us start the process in Revit, where we do the main part of the building. And as you can see here, we have all the details like the core, the staircases, the slabs, the facades, etc. And we now simply go ahead and export the geometry as well as the selected drawing set to Omniverse. And once we open Omniverse, you will see that the full BIM model is represented with all the details we've added in the same structured manner as it was in Revit. And we also have BIM data that has come across for us to review. And as you can see, we also have the drawings, or the selected drawings for that matter, from Revit positioned in the correct locations in the model. Here we see the ground floor plan as an example, as well as the typical facade detail that we've added. And this gives us the ability to review the 3D model with all the BIM data as well as the relevant detail plans. And of course, further to this, we can also use the section tool to review the model further, allowing us to review the full Revit model with data in Omniverse. Let's get into some of the detail design. In a parallel process, one of the designers is working on the internal apartment design and layout options. She's using SketchUp for this and placing the main details and furniture of the interiors, and now simply publishing that to the same project that the Revit model was published to as a prop to add to the overall project. Opening that model in Omniverse, she can quickly add the daylight system and review the geometry and materials and adjust or apply the high quality MDL materials from the library to the various geometries. She's also adding details from the library, like furniture, lighting, decor, etc. to add a more realistic representation of her proposed apartments. Here you can see the various apartment types created, like a one bedroom, a two bedroom and a three bedroom type. And she is now adding options to each of those apartment types with different finishes and materials to have variation in the overall apartment styles. This is one of the features of using USD, allowing the designers to create variations on the same initial geometry set, and that shows the power of the non-destructive approach of Omniverse and USD. While the interior design is in process, another designer is looking at the actual layout of the apartment types in the building, automating the placement of the one bedroom and two bedroom and three bedroom apartments based on the variation mixes as defined by the design brief provided by the client. This is done in Rhino using Grasshopper scripts, and the designer is publishing out the various apartment mix options to Omniverse directly from these scripts. Now we're going to show some asset replacement from Rhino based on a CSV table, where we are going to swap out the simplified apartment volumes from Rhino with the high definition models generated from SketchUp in Omniverse as USDs. You can see that we are now selecting just the various apartment types to review in Omniverse, and you can see the one bedroom, and the two bedroom and the three bedroom apartments that are represented as volumes in Rhino being replaced dynamically with the fully developed SketchUp models containing all the furniture, the lights, the details, etc. And all we have to do now is take the, the computed apartment mixes and export these as fully detailed layout options in Omniverse. So the designers are using the applications of their choice to perform their respective tasks and here we are using, as an example, Rhino Grasshopper scripts to place SketchUp apartment types in Omniverse. And this is super powerful and shows the true multi-collaboration of the various applications that we use. When we look at the variant capability of USD and Omniverse, we can start applying it to the many building disciplines to create a building configurator. Here we look at the various facade options combined with floor slab options and apartment layout options. These are all updated in real time and allow the reviewer to mix the various options to ensure the best combination and outcome all in real time without having to re-render multi-option combinations before a review meeting. This allows us to collate in real time again multi-options to truly understand the relationship and outcome of the combinations of the various building disciplines. 
Further, we can extend Omniverse to count the apartment types per option, as you can see here, allowing us to understand the layout, visual impact, relationship of apartments to other parts of the building, as well as to the context, while meeting the required apartment type mix for the specific local requirements. During the design process, you will typically generate multi-variations of the specific disciplines of the building. In this case, we're using Rhino and Grasshopper to generate various facade options. We can then take the facade options and live load them into our projects, combined with all the other applications from all the other disciplines to have a realistic representation of what the facade variations would look like in context, and then have the ability to switch between these options to understand the visual comparison between these, as well as assisting, of course, with the decision-making process. So let's talk a little bit about global collaboration. I'm based in London, while my colleague is based in New York. And I'm using Rhino and Grasshopper specifically for the computation and optimization of the facade options. While my colleague in New York has Omniverse Create open with a full model with all the combinations of all the various uh, options and applications, while getting the live feedback in real time of the changes I make on the facade model and the material choices. This demonstrates that you can use the best applications suitable for the specific functions that you want to perform while combining all the job decent data together in a high fidelity visualization model to review in context from anywhere in the world. And as you can see here, we might be discussing the overhang on one side of the building while I'm adjusting and tweaking the facade geometry and having the computational script update that geometry changes off the facade and live upload only those changes to our nuclear server while my colleague in New York is seeing the updates in real time as the compute finishes. Further, with the non-destructive nature of USD and USD layers, this allows my colleague to actually go and adjust and apply material overrides on this live model. As you can see, these generate deltas that do not affect the actual geometry or any of the geometry I update during the live feed, but displays an override on the materials that I'm applying to that facade. So while the various materials are applied and reviewed, it has no effect on the geometry, but adds this override on the material choices. Um, and the adjustments of the materials or any other variations has no effect on the geometry I am live syncing to the nuclear server. Now looking at the interior, we can use our Rhino connector to be able to export our project and join it with the rest of our building. And so here we have the Rhino connector, which allows us to export our geometry and materials in full fidelity. We're able to, to utilize the Omniverse material library to add additional materials as needed. All of the texture mapping and scaling comes over as well. And so here we'll go ahead and search for a fabric material that we'll assign to these cabinets. We could also do things like change some of the UV scaling as needed, and then go ahead and change the coloring um, as we need to make it right for our design. We'll go ahead and add an additional material from the library in order to get the project to look correctly. Additionally, we'll go ahead and pull in a mirror here. And so we'll, that's a separate USD. We'll load it in as a payload. Now, in order to get some additional assets, we're using our deep search function within our catalog of 3D assets. So here we're able to search and find different 3D assets that we want to take a look at. So for example, glasses, we no longer need to name and find those, but we could just type that in and be able to place them throughout our project as needed. And you can index your whole 3D library with that. Looking further at the functionality of Grasshopper in Omniverse, we're able to create a real-time live workflow. So for this interior hospitality space, we have my colleague who's based in California in the top left, and she's viewing this in Create. We have myself working in Rhino and Grasshopper and changing the design on the fly. So we're able to more collaboratively and in real time across different geographies, be able to see design changes. So we have this linked into a model where we have our context site, we have the building around us that you've already seen, and then we have our imported Rhino model and only the top of the bar where the fluting is designed, we're making some changes to see how this would look within our space. And then as we're going back and forth in conversation, 
we can come to a design decision very quickly together. Instead of baking, exporting, rendering, we're able to see all of these changes live and make those design decisions a lot quicker. Looking at variants within USD, we're able to utilize these with our interior designers, where they're able to create a series of different USD files for this counter bar. And so as they assign different materials and geometry and export those as different USD files, we're able to bring that into our model and flip through. So that allows us to see different design options, not only for one item, but within here, we've also collaborated with a lighting designer in order to create and design a few different lighting options. So we're able to flip through the counter options as well as the lighting options to see all of the different design opportunities in real time. Next, let's take a look at the 3ds Max connector, which supports bi-directional workflow in Omniverse. This means that you can connect to a project and make live updates in real time. The changes that are made in 3ds Max are reflected in Omniverse, and any changes that you make in Omniverse are then pushed back into 3ds Max. This is essential for maintaining the most up-to-date information on a project. In this example, the 3ds Max artist has pulled the latest Revit building in Omniverse, and you can see they're flying around the scene, visualizing the time of day and placing assets on the sidewalk. The important point here is that the 3ds Max user can start working from day one and have the confidence that they are working on the latest version of the files. You can work in a live context like this, or you can work offline and then push updates to the project. The idea is that everyone is working in parallel and they always have the confidence they're working on the latest version of the project. And they can contribute as much as they want from any time, anywhere. Now we are looking at an animation cycling through different design options for the building facade. This is possible in Omniverse with USD variants to quickly swap between different designs showing what the building would look like with different glass materials, wood materials, or any combination of both. It is powerful to see the design in the context of the city with the beautifully ray traced daylighting. Connecting this together in Omniverse makes for an easy way to see all elements of the project in one place. Now let's zoom out and take a look at our urban context model. So here we're using Esri's city engine and we're able to create this rich urban model and then use Esri's procedural modeling tools to do things like create streets, edit our site. So currently we have some buildings, so we're gonna make that an open site. And then from there, we can go ahead and th take our streets and make them into sidewalks and then prepare our pedestrian waterfront for our project so we, we're right along the river. From there, we export that as a USD file in order for us to import that into Omniverse. From there, you'll see that our geometry, our materials all come in as full fidelity, nice visualizations. So we have our project site, we're able to have our adjacent context models, and then our pedestrian waterfront that we also prepared. And you can see all of that high fidelity information is there within Omniverse. Early stage environmental analysis of a site is very important and here we show a generative process to determine the best orientation and position of the building on the site in relation to the daylight on the adjacent sites. We are sending these updates to Omniverse as an animated geometry sequence and combine that with, as example, the sun dial showing the sun position during the various times of the year, the wind direction diagram, as well as the actual CFT compute of the wind conditions on the site. And this gives us a visual understanding of the environmental conditions of our project location at early stages. With the many connectors we have to industry applications, here we are running CFD in the cloud using SimScale to understand the wind conditions of our site. And we are post-processing the results through Paraview to extract transient slices to understand pedestrian wind comfort as an example, or the streamlines to review the impact of the surrounding buildings and the river on the wind conditions of our site. 
the results feed live back into Omniverse, where we can combine this with the other environmental results from various applications, as mentioned, a sundial and the wind direction diagrams, as well as this computed results of streamlines to actually allow us to review all the environmental conditions through a real-time visualization model and to understand the conditions of our site and the impact of the environment on our site. We can extend how we share our projects with our colleagues or our clients through a number of different streaming applications or possibilities, whether that's through an iPad or a VR headset through our application Create XR. So here you can see my colleague who's in California and I'm based in New York. In the bottom right, they're on an iPad through Create XR and I'm in Create. And so we can flip through those design options and be able to see from different angles how and where they experience that project. So since we are live linked together, in this Omniverse experience, you're, they're able to take a look, see how the sun looks, see the different views. So we're not only restricted to looking back to a single image or an animation, but they're able to experience this live in real time. They can open this up in their environment, whether that be through a headset or something as easy as a, a tablet application where they can see, take a look, see how the sun looks, see the different angles and be able to experience things on their own. And that really amplifies the kind of client and colleague and sharing experience that we can have with an application like Create. At first view, you have a simplified user interface where you can use things like waypoints to flip through your USD project in pre-selected waypoints that you've created, or you can use our tool to mark up your project in order for you to share some notes with your colleagues or consultants. Here you'll see, I'll grab an arrow to make a note here. So for example, maybe we wanna change this material before our next client presentation. So please change this to Walnut. And that I can use to be able to communicate with those that are working within this USD file. And we can go ahead and apply those changes. Additionally, those get saved and we can flip through other ones. So here we have update the copper to a square profile mullion. So whether that be working with your architects or consultants or visualization specialists, you can make those series of changes. We could also flip through different waypoints and you'll be able to see that as we go through them, we could also see that where our markups are taken and where we have certain notes. With the easy to use forwarding, we can advance through all of these waypoints in order for us to see everything. Looking at some of our other built-in AI tools, we have image to car, where we're able to take an image within here, for example, a black BMW, and it generates a three-dimensional, so from image to 3D, a three-dimensional car. Not only does it create the 3D model, but it has working steering and gas, as well as moving wheels and turning wheels. So all of that is physically hooked up to the automobile within here. So that starts to create uh, an opportunity for us to not only you know, place assets from images, but also create something that becomes a, a much funner experience. So this, you can see, we're, we're using our keyboard here to drive our little car uh, around the site and along our waterfront. To summarize the project, you can see we've used a lot of different applications. So from Omniverse Create as our main platform to pull all of our project and USD files together. We used Autodesk Revit in order to build out our base building and use that what it's great for. We used McNeil Rhino and Grasshopper to build out our facade and ground floor. We've used SketchUp in order to build out our interiors and lighting, as well as 3ds Max to build out our props and exterior landscaping, and then Omniverse Content in order to create all of the wonderful assets and finish everything up. And so to bring this all home, Omniverse Create and the USD file format allows us to bring all of these applications into one platform in order for us to all collaborate, work together, and have a single source of truth for our project. So we're no longer importing another different file type 
into a platform that doesn't support it, but we're able to work together collaboratively. And what this also really unlocks are people and skills. So going back to the first few slides where we talked about all of the different platforms and all of the different skill sets, this allows us to work with people that work in Revit, Rhino, SketchUp, 3ds Max, and a whole host of other applications. And what that really allows us to do is all come together and contribute on the things that we're all good at. We're now allowing everyone to come together in a unified platform with a USD open format.